Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Penfield Trails Committee call to order Wednesday, February 2nd, 2002 to 5 p.m. meeting. I am Nels Carman, I am chairman. Uh, that's the call to order. And I want to thank the man to my right, Mr. Robert Ansaldi, for running the January meeting in my absence. Uh, January 5th meeting minutes are here on one page to approve. It was a 12 minute meeting, so uh, probably I'm the, the one who wants to thank Denny Tripp for getting Fort Schuyler uh, open uh, for our later to report January 22nd postponed, but the January 22nd hike took place at North Ellison. So every, while everybody's checking to approve the minutes, we want to talk about our event this February. It's February 18th, Friday. It is the town winter party at Harris Whalen Park up top. And inside one of the side programs is our hike into Harris Whalen starting at 6.30, hopefully with the full moon out and lots of new snow and the glow sticks hanging off the trees. This will be our third year doing not only the winter party up top with sledding and families, but the chance to hike, do a winter hike under the full moon inside of Harris Whalen Park. So this is what the flyers look like. I'll bring them down a little bit. Uh, look for them. Join us 6 o'clock Friday, February 18th. Thank you. Minutes approved? Uh, one correction. The second last sentence, I believe that's a $1,000 budget, not 1,00. Zero, zero. I can uh, verify that, yes. Other than that, yes, I make a motion right. to approve. Anybody else after correction? Look good? I'll second the motion. Add seconds. Thank you very much. I wasn't at the meeting, but I had it on TV. All right. Eventually, because of deeply cold temperatures uh, in January, we actually postponed the hike one week. And then we were greeted with even a lower Friday night temperature than the other Friday we blew off. However, we went with it because the fort was open. We had hot chocolate. I could make a fire in the fort while Bob Ansaldi would lead six hikers, one cross country, one snowshoer from the skating rink at uh, North Ellison over to the fort. Uh, Bob started at no. three degrees. Uh, Eleanor also participated. That's right. Uh, Eleanor, we had three staff, myself, Bob and Eleanor and six six winter hikers who were enthused enough to leave at three degrees at 10 o'clock. By the time we turned it around from the fort back at 1120, it was already 19 degrees. So thank you very much for uh, sticking with it and getting our January hike taken care of. Um, I'm reminded next on our agenda, Eagle Scout projects update, and I was supplied by the brand new scout realignment in the district here, so I can call people and email people about looking for Eagle projects and, and lining them up. We're gonna talk more about that because we have a project list that's ready to go for eager Eagle Scouts, but we'll get to, into that a little bit later uh, on the agenda. Immediate trails need, needs report. Tim, you say you've got a chance to check out most of the trails this winter on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about once a month we send our crew out to go check out the trails. Um, this past month we did not go out and check out a lot of them because of the snow that we've had and we were busy clearing all the excess snow from the sidewalks and parking lots and stuff. So that's on our list to do once uh, we're done with this big storm coming up. Thank you. Uh, conservation Board, Ed? Yes, the Conservation Board had a meeting last night. They spent most of the meeting talking about uh, a town event for Earth Day and on the 23rd of April, and I think uh, my gentleman over there that represent the town probably know as much about what's going on as I do. Uh, they voted to buy some trees for pass out with the public 
and uh, the goal is to become Tree City USA. So those are the guidelines they're following. Yeah, still a lot of those things are still being uh, kind of worked out. Uh, more information, I'm sure, will be uh, down the line on the town website, but none none of the exact um, parts of that event or program have been planned yet. But those will come out as soon as possible. They also, they also had a conversation with the Healthy Yards of, of Monroe County uh, lady, and uh, they're exploring some uh, opportunities to have her come to a meeting in the future. Uh, Penfield Green is, is the goal there. Uh, they did updates, uh, nothing that the uh, Conservation Board needs to review. It was uh, 20... 140 uh, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, uh, 1698 Penfield Road, and and Penfield Square. There's a couple of new commercial buildings on Penfield Square. Uh, there is a, a gentleman that just came onto the conservation board by the name of Daniel Moore. You might want to have some conversation with him. He's an Eagle Scout out of Troop 312. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think he's out of high school, but I don't know what he's doing now. Uh, the, the Moore name is synonymous with the Penfield Town Board for many years. So. How uh, is he a young man just out of high school? Is that? Or? I, I believe so. I don't know how old he is. Okay. I'm not sure how old he is, but that's no relation to um, the former council person. <laughs> Uh, he okay. just came on the board a few months ago. Okay. Anything else? Uh, he's going to involve the scouts in the tree planting project for, uh, for the conservation board. So that's why I say maybe you want to have a conversation oh, yeah. with Daniel also. I'd like to get him to come to our March indoor <coughs> hike because our topic will be co conservation biology. Uh, and that's uh, the second Saturday in March here our indoor hike, which we've revived, and we're going to invite other trails groups to come and uh, hold up a table and give their programs where else we can hike in uh, upstate New York. That's, so, yes. That's it, that's it for the board report. All right. Um, to held items, trailhead fitness report, I want to simply table that toward the new business topic, which fits right into it. So, Ed, back to you on easements. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is an easement we have with uh, Mark IV Construction on uh, 25 Willow Pond Way. Uh, it's a project I helped shepherd starting in 2016. Uh, the town just did a, an inspection over there with uh, Jim Costello, what uh, was accomplished was rebuilding all the nature trails that are over in the area. The problem with the agreement, as it stands now, there's no uh, maintenance for the winter, and it's the sidewalk system for that whole uh, community. So uh, I think the agreement needs to be worked and something to provide uh, access for handicap because right now the trail uh, is not accessible. It, it's accessible, but the surface is not right for wheelchairs and walkers and that kind of stuff. And also the town should probably do some signage indicating that this is Willow Pond Nature Park or Nature Trail. That, that would be appropriate for that. Uh, the neighbors have been involved in, in the thing too. And I think who picked up the ball from uh, Costello was Mike O'Connor from the engineering department. So, so Mark IV owns the land, but we have an easement? There's, there's six acres of trails out there. It connects all the cul-de-sacs on Willow Pond Way. Uh, the other one that was brought up at, uh, I, th I think it was, uh, Comprehensive Plan Committee meeting was the the easement that goes uh, in Penfield Park up to the trailer parks. Uh, that should appear on our uh, agenda each month is something that hasn't been finished because that hasn't been installed yet. Uh, 
that that agreement is in place with the town. Uh, the developer has to has to put that in. Uh, they may have to rework it because of all the erosion that occurred in that area. But uh, uh, that would be a good one for up to, us to keep track of until it finally gets built. And I don't know what the schedule is on that either. Ed, where does it come from? It, it comes from the, the dedicated public road in Penfield Park up to the trailer parks. Oh, okay. It goes up the hillside. It was uh, developed that way in lieu of sidewalks along 441, which the town and the state didn't really want to do anyway because of the terrain involved. Uh, the third one is over on uh, Scribner Road, which is a subdivision we talked about getting an easement to, and the town decided to do sidewalks on the north side of Atlantic Avenue up to Whelan Road, uh, extend the sidewalk that's there, and then a little piece on Scribner Road. And this probably should be on our agenda, too, because it's, it's part of our walking easements to... Uh, until it gets installed finally. Uh, that, that was a decision somebody in engineering made because it, otherwise they would have had to build bridges over Ross Brook, which is, uh, would have been part of the easement land uh, that they subdivided there along uh, Scribner Road with it. So there's, there's an easement, but there's no plan to put in a formal trail? That's sidewalk. correct. In, in lieu of putting in a formal trail, they decided to do the sidewalks. They figured it was more cost effective and and it would benefit more people. But people could walk that, since there's an easement, people could walk that space. Right now it's on private property, so you can't walk it. Okay. Right. If, the, if there was an easement, you could walk it. That's correct. Oh, so there's no easement? There is no easement. No, nothing was included when the subdivision was developed. Ed, what is the address of that that you just mentioned? It's a Pardon? What is the address? It's On Scribner, it's right across from Bay Trail. It's I, I forget Shady, the name of the Sh subdivision. Shady Rock Road or is Shady Rock Stone, Lane or something. Is it Stone, Stone Rock or something Sh like that? Shady Rock. Shady Rock subdivision. Okay. Right. Just because I'm new, I just need to follow up just to get familiar with these projects. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the kids used to cut through the, when it was woods, the kids used to cut through there all the time, and of course they can't do that now with the, with the new. Uh, the other easement we were talking about was uh, off of uh, Shadow Pines, over to Harwood Circle. That's been taken care of by the town. That hasn't been built yet, but that'll probably be in the, the town's plans when they develop uh, the park over there. I think those are all the important ones now, that, that the, the three that we need to keep track of until they, they get finally completed one form or another. Is that it? Yep. Okay. All right, now we get to the real meat of this meeting and something uh, a long medium term and short term project all rolled into one is that Tim in the Parks Department and Andrew at Penrick, uh, and we undertook the trail, trailhead kiosk fitness report, and it has to do with 11 trailheads, evaluating the shape, that basically the kiosks because they're in at these trailheads, and in conjunction with that, um, these are bite-sized Eagle Scout projects, uh, to be worked on, some real good nuts and bolts things that we need to have happen. And Honey Creek doesn't have any kiosk right now, so that's a priority. And we've also decided a standard design in the future for kiosks rather than ad hoc here, ad hoc there, different measurements, different facings. So Honey Creek sits there as a bite-sized Eagle project. Also, to rehabilitate or rebuild or put in a new kiosk. Glendevere's trailhead needs it. Uh, Harris Whalen Park, the old up top area needs it. And the Town Hall VMP Pond Overlook needs it. So that's without, with a none at Honey Creek and one, two, three 
um, rehabilitation, other areas for kiosks and trailheads. Th there sits a, an enticement to link up for Eagle Scout projects. Uh, and you, can, you gentlemen are welcome to comment further on that. So, so Tim and I have, uh, after completing this and um, putting it into kind of more of a formal um, view for you guys to look at, we have met with one Eagle Scout so far, and uh, the discussion was uh, since Honey Creek did not have a kiosk, uh, that seemed to be what um, that young man was looking to do. Um, he's proposing that back to his leader at this point, and then we'll get back to us. We're hoping that springtime, uh, of course, when the weather clears, that that might be a project to start then, uh, to hit the ground running and have it be completed by summer. Um, but really, we kind of just looked at it from Tim and Mai's perspective uh, with the rating scale that's on there. We wanted to get the width and the height uh, really just for if a scout does come in and for our general knowledge, but just say this is what's out there. Um, the two that are we've deemed excellent, uh, which are both, uh, one's Harris Whalen, one's Four Mile Creek, which are newer, uh, we're trying to sell those to the Boy Scouts as saying this is the model to kind of go with, this is the size to go with um, if you're renovating and or building new. Um, so one thing that came out of that that we thought would be appropriate to bring to this uh, committee is really just our overall, you know, building of the kiosk. That's wonderful for Boy Scout projects, but we've also had people, Girl Scouts, other Boy Scouts come in and say that they wanted to update the information that was in the kiosks. And when we were around to all of the different kiosks, we saw a whole range of information just I'm sure over the, over the years, uh, some are updated more than, than others, but we kind of maybe thought since we're looking at kiosks um, right now, maybe we come up with a standard, you know, this is the type of information that goes into all of the kiosks. And whether that's a trails committee uh, project, a parks committee project, or a boy or girl scout project, really just getting, um, the committee's opinion just to say, you know, what should be in these types of kiosks. So some of the things that Tim and I discussed were obviously trails, having a new trail map that's there showing um, what the trails that are available, distance, things like that, park rules. Um, some other things that we noticed were, you know, vegetation, animals, um, insect information, stuff like that. So I guess we, we put it back to the committee for, for ideas. Um, to maybe come up with something that's a little bit more standard. Uh, maybe we break the, the kiosks into four different sections, two different sections, um, but really we just kind of maybe want to come up with a standard kiosk information so that if anybody goes to any of our Penfield trails, they can kind of recognize that this is a Penfield kiosk and this is the information that they're going to be provided. Is the one that's on Mott Lane, that's not going to be moved to uh, Honey Creek? That's by, gone. It's gone? Yeah, that was, that was moved. That's by, by Five Mile Line Road now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think it was. No, it's no. Not. Where was it moved to? There's no to? kiosk on Honey Creek. Any. Right, there's none at all on Honey Creek. The one that was on Mott Lane got moved. That had taken down, because it was defaced several times. Oh, so that's gone? Yeah. Oh. It, it got reinstalled some other place, but I'm, I'm at a loss for. Yes, it's up at our new, our new park on 250. Okay. And, it, and it's so a good, Creek? one of our standard Four Mile Creek, models. yeah. That, that's not the same one that was at Mott on Mott's Lane, though. Was yes. It? Oh, it was it looked awful small. I, I don't know. It looked smaller. Well, it it fits if you go to. Uh, uh, four mile, our new Four Mile Creek Park. It's installed. It's in the right place, and it's functional. Okay. And that's going to be the size from now on. Well, there's. Or there, oh, there was two two standards we liked. The one now at Four Mile Creek, and the one at 250 going up to Harris Whalen. Two new, clean, functional models. Yeah, and if, if you look at the width and height of both of those, they're very similar. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that, but at least those are what, if a Boy Scout or Girl Scout comes and asks Tim and I or the town to say, hey, we want to do this, you know, what's a model to go after? That's at least where we're pointing them 
towards being that they're the newest and in the best condition. So those are the sizes um, that we're thinking they'll probably use as well. It doesn't have to be, but that's at least where we're pointing to uh, them to. Having seen all of them, would you say that the ones that are like 76 by 41 are too big? No, well, no. Uh, as, as far as a scout project would go, I think it would be too much for a scout to handle one right. of those of that size. Okay. So we've got we've got some large ones. Uh, <clears throat> one at Linear Park by the by the fishing parking lot. That's big. And Sherwood Fields is a big <clears throat> one too. Also down at Panorama Valley Creek Park down there behind Tops, that is also a big one. So really, the thought was, you know, regardless of the size, um, you know, what just really we're looking for some guidance on what information uh, do we propose to put in there to make sure that those things are in there. For larger ones, we can always add more information, uh, but just to have some sort of standard, um, really. For, to, to guide the, these projects to move forward, whether it be the trails. So as, a, as a for instance, if, if we got a scout down the line that picked Harris Whalen Park up, up by the, uh, the bocce ball courts, that's one of the bad ones now. That would come out and we could have a match from the 250 one up there. It would be a good idea. All right. Yeah, it would be a good idea to, for an approach. About how many Eagle Scouts do you anticipate per year? How many could we reasonably do? So it, it, it really goes in waves. Okay. <laughs> it's um, true. How motivated some of these people are sometimes, some of these kids are. We um, sometimes we get four phone calls a year, sometimes six. It all depends on, and then it also depends on what they're interested in doing. Sometimes they don't want to do kiosks, they get more, they want to do more trail maintenance and mm -hmm. building. Um, what was, no, I forgot what the kid's name was that did that flower box at the head of, uh, it's, a, it's a very nice flower box and a nice bench there at the, at the head of um, Honey Creek Trail on Five Mile yes. Line. Yeah, so it's stuff like that. So yeah. it, it the kid got the, the kid got pulled over to England just before he finished. And <laughs> remarkably, his mom finished it, <laughs> put the plants in. Yep. Yeah, so really the key S, this is just something if, if a scout comes in, we can say, hey, these are, these are ideas that we have and are looking to be done, but um, typically they'll come in with their own ideas and try and figure out what works best for the town and for their project. Would we ever consider a community service organization like Rotary taking some of these or looking at other community service organizations helping out? Yeah, that's a possibility, if, especially if we don't have, because I know scouting's been on the decline for a couple years now. Um, if they're not getting fixed to, like, I don't know, we haven't talked about, like, a, um, like we're, we're going to replace two a year or three a year. We're more or less, they've trickled in enough where we didn't have to come up with that kind of program. Okay. But, um, yeah, that's always an option. Okay, thank you. Three items of old business, Nels, uh, that should appear on our agenda every month. Uh, one is the trail from behind Topps Market up to the south entrance of Ellison Park. That's going to be a sidewalk trail. Uh, the town is in, in the process of finishing that section up the hill this summer, but the trail from behind the market over to the Penfield Road Bridge needs to be rebuilt because it was washed out during the one flood down there. So that should be on the agenda. Uh, the trail uh, from Ellison Park up to uh, where Glendevere's was, that needs to be rebuilt. We have an easement there with Baker Commodities and it's, it's in use, but it needs to be uh, moved away from the creek a little bit and mowed and, and fixed up a little better. And then we need an agreement with the state of New York to conduct a trail along 286. Uh, there was a verbal with Jim at one time, but I don't think there was ever anything written up for that. Mm. 
Is that it? I got another uh, note here, but I can't re decipher what it was. <laughs> if it comes to me before the end of the meeting, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to be now to open floor topics for for participation from anyone. I there is something in the works for April 30th. It's uh, a proposal. And it's a Saturday, and it would be at Sherwood Fields, and this is to encourage. Uh, people with dogs in the park uh, to enjoy the the dog walking capabilities of Sherwood Fields. And we have a couple uh, Penrex staffers that are interested in, in dog enthusiasts, so we think we might put in an extra dog etiquette, dog encounter, uh, people in, in, with their favorite dog hike on April 30th at Sherwood Fields. It's in the works. So um, I'm, I'm encouraged to do that myself with the uh, staffers. If they round up enough dogs and we keep talking it up, we will probably do it April 30th at Sherwood. Andrew, any more? Am yeah, I, I can am I, I, Is that good? I, yeah, wonderful job. Uh, I can hop on that saying that there is a Penrec program that is for dog walking specifically that does go to different parks. Um, that's being uh, maintained by one of our staff, Haley Knapp, a rec leader. Um, they do a monthly hike, but you do have to register for that. Um, and you'll get a bunch of information, um, a Penfield Rec dog bandana, all these cool cool treats and things like that. And then uh, from that, this group kind of looked at doing something with the Trails Committee more specific at, at Sherwoods Park. So we'll have more information on uh, the Rec Department's Facebook page and our website as well uh, as we get closer to April. And we scheduled that so that it was no other competing uh, programs going on on that Saturday. So it looked good to us we, on the 30th. Um, south side of Shadow Pines could use a container. Dog waste container. Yes. I, I Which, thought of the other one. What, uh, on, on Willow Pond Way uh, Nature Trail, uh, we should do a rededication uh, there was a plaque awarded the first time we dedicated the, the system uh, with Mark IV, but we've got uh, new owners or landlords over there anyway, which is uh, Watermark. And uh, the town did a rededication, or did a dedication at one time, but we they put a lot of money and, and time into rebuilding the trail, so they should be rededicated in their honor. Well, Rededicated if if and when what something gets fixed well, over there. To, just to acknowledge all the work they did in rebuilding the trails. They've got some grading to do yet, and the town's going to have to follow up to make sure that gets done. And there's a bench that got destroyed that they've got in their garage that they're supposed to fix, and it's supposed to be reinstalled. And when all that uh, gets done and get some signage up, why a rededication should be done for there. And then we also want to do a dedication out to Four Mile Creek. I believe that's scheduled in June. Is it that is. not correct? When we get down the, down that far, again, the original donating family, uh, we we're waiting for them to, you know, want to find out what we did, and we're ready to go. We got a parking lot there. We've got trails, and we we could probably use another bridge crossing for sure. But yes, in June. And we will, you know, be promoting that as the spring rolls along, uh, and and getting in touch with trying to get in touch with the family again to see if they can show up for it. Do they still live in that house across the street? I don't believe so. No. Oh. That's why, it's, it's, you know, we could have knocked on their door and said, "You want to do it?" No, they're not there anymore. <laughs> I don't know where they are. Um, but uh, Marie, you might, Tony has an idea of where they are, um, whether okay. they're going to respond or not. All right. Uh, it would be the June hike okay. this year. I'll follow up. Yeah. He was uh, trying to get them to show up 
for the last few years and no dice. So I think I know where Tony is, so I'll see. I'll see where he's at with it. I'll pick it up from there. Yeah, in other words, the facilities are ready for them for a while. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on open forum? I did just want to mention a little bit more about that event uh, that's coming up on February 18th, that we will have hikes uh, starting at 6.30 and we'll try to go off every half an hour like we did last year. Um, we have two different routes. Um, they're both about a third of a mile. One's a little bit more hilly that stays uh, to the west of all the trails and then on the east side that's a little bit more flat. Uh, but they're not too bad and like Nell said they're lit up by glow sticks and you can bring um, really anything that you'd like other than skis up there. Um, we'll have family sledding on the hill, we'll have music, we'll have hot chocolate. Um, we're partnering with Browncroft Community Church and Girl Scouts of Western New York. They're going to be doing arts and crafts, a snow person and snow sculpture um, contest that's up there closer to the open shelter. Um, and we'll just have a bunch of recreation information. So uh, come on out and have a good time. Should be hopefully we don't pray for snow too often and don't let Tim hear me <laughs> say it. But um, uh, it's been really nice the past three years having the hikes up there under the moonlight. So we're hoping for good weather. I've, I've snowshoed it in the past. I've walked it. So yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Uh, if no one else has something open on the forum, we've had a meeting. Next meeting, March 2nd, 5 o'clock, here. And thank you again, Bob, for the January meeting because I was in Montana. We're adjourned. Thank you, Nels. Thank you, Nels.